do you think then the um, float tanks, because they shut off all your sensories, you're able to get in a flow state of like into your mind, sort of say? Yeah, that, that's actually interesting. Um, I actually teach a class twice a week called Flow um, about uh, mobility and breath work and learning to utilize your breath to help you go through ranges of motion. And then we do specific breath work to relax. And the reason I called it flow is because for me, it is a flow state doing that set of things, right? It, but I, I it's weird. I've called it flow, but I never really linked those two together. But I, I suppose you're right. I think that possibly sensory deprivation does help you or is what allows you to get into a flow state within yourself. A flow state exploring your own subconscious or consciousness. That's pretty cool. There's another way to do it, apparently. Yeah, I, I, I reckon it does too. There's another way to, to do it with um, ping pong balls and a red light, apparently, or like a flashing light. You have to cut the ping pong balls or something and you put them over your eyes. And you have um, a red flashing light or another flashing light. I don't remember exactly what it is. People would have to go research it. Have you heard about this before? It's not as good as the float <laughs> tank, but <clears throat> they can get you some of the results a float tank can get you. When you said ping pong balls, I was like, is this a Thailand story? <laughs> it's like, where Yo, is he going with this? What? Your people in Thailand, like the guys selling it, they're like... That's what they do. That's how they sell the ping pong show to people. <laughs> they just walk around oh, one. They look at you and they and they do like that head nod and go, oh, sorry, <laughs> like that. People are just like, hell yeah, brother. Sign Yo, me up. Ping pong show? Yeah, fucking really, fucking really. Oh my God. Um, no, I, I haven't heard of that. Um, I would just imagine that, okay, so part of a float tank is the amount of magnesium that's dissolved in the water right? You actually end up floating on the surface of the water. Um, and that, that takes away, you know, like your body is essentially, essentially weightless, right? So that's a very different feeling from the tradition, you know, the normal feeling of having gravity continuously sort of pushing on you. Gravity's still pushing on you, but you, you're essentially weightless. Um, plus all of the magnesium and whatever else is dissolved into that water, those electrolytes, those minerals, um, are creating an, uh, an, uh, electrical chemical sort of field that your body is engaging with. I, I imagine that helps. Um, the darkness and the lack of noise and all of those other things is taking away all of that sensory input. So I feel like you can replicate that minus the floating just by putting an eye mask and some headphones on or being in a really quiet room or a really dark room. Um, I, I actually, I think I do this every single night, to be honest. Like most nights I'll have a bath and it'll typically have like magnesium or Epsom salts in there with some, um, sodium as well. Some just regular salt, maybe some essential oils if I'm feeling a little bit special. Um, but nice hot bath, right? And, uh, I'll sit in there. And I'll often just like, you know, meditate or listen to, listen to a book or a podcast. Then I get out and when I go to bed, I put my, I put an eye mask on and I, I have, um, like earmuffs essentially that I put on as well. And I have my room pitch black and I'll lie there and I'll essentially do what I do in a float tank, which is just be present in my own mind, in my own thoughts. And if I want to have certain types of dreams. I'll deliberately think of things that I want to dream about or, or problems that I want to solve. And I'll start to load that into my mind. And then when I, when I go to sleep, it ha there's a higher probability that I'll have dreams like that. And I, I consider that to be a flow state as well. So one big thing, and I think this really ties into flow state, and I think it ties into meditation too, because I think meditation can be a form of flow, but it's different. Like, you know, like it's, I think it's more of like a passive versus there's very active flow states, which is where you're physically active as well. The breathing is the thing that really helped me in the evenings get into a bit of a flow state with, with myself and lose sort of t track of time in the thing and then essentially just fall asleep. Um, but learning how to control your state through breath is such a powerful tool, right? So 
at nighttime, when you're trying to wind down, ideally what you're trying to do is just gradually lengthen your exhales. If you do longer exhales, your body will relax. If you do shorter exhales and bigger and longer inhales, you'll start to energize, right? So more oxygen in, more energy, right? Slowly releasing that carbon dioxide out of the lungs or after it's been utilized, the more you sort of relax. So long exhales equals relaxing, shorter exhales, longer inhales equals amping up or energizing. So like just lying in bed and just practicing your breath work, to me, I can get into a flow state just doing that, that breath. But I think that, um, and this is what I found teaching the class, initially some people really struggle to just lie, like sit, sit, be present with themselves and focus on their breath for more than like 20 seconds. Um, but with a bit of practice, they get very good at it. And what I've had reported to me is it is probably one of the most powerful skills you can, you can develop as a person or as a human. Mm, that might be a really good entrance point for people who have difficulty with flow state or, or maybe anyone listening who hasn't experienced a lot of flow state and trying to sort of improve on that or in, attempt to one day harness it. Maybe that's like a good entry point to do sort of, yeah, those breath exercises, which, which you're talking about. You mentioned a good thing about people trying to enter into flow state. Um, one thing that I think inhibits like self-consciousness is definitely a thing. Like if you're self-conscious, it's very hard to get into a flow state. So that's why developing your skills to a certain level where you no longer are self-conscious or that you're so lost in the skill that you can't be self-conscious because you're just so present in what you're doing is very important. And I think that might be why flow state may not be as common for some people because maybe they haven't developed those skills sufficiently or to the level that they would like to have them or to the level that they would need to get into a flow state, right? Like, um, I don't want to rip on, you know, obese people, but I feel like it'd be very hard for an obese person to get into a flow state playing basketball or, you know, doing certain activities. I think that because their physical ability is limiting them, if that makes sense. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think probably activity is another barrier. If you're not, you know, an active person or you're not you know, at least motivated to, to do something, maybe a hobby, if you don't really have those things, if you just work, go home and watch TV, there aren't any opportunities to experience flow state. Unless you have like, you know, you're passionate about your job. But if, if you're not passionate about your job and you are overweight and you're home, and you watch TV, maybe going to the gym would be a very good first step. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. The other thing about it, I think that um, is important to note with flow state is it has to be sufficiently challenging, right? Like you can't just do something at a level that's not challenging because you get bored. So you can't get into the flow state. It has to be sufficiently challenging to keep you interested, but not too challenging that you can't do it, so to speak. It sort of has to be this beautiful little, um, yeah, this, this beautiful range right towards the top. I can't remember where I read this, but apparently it was like, it's like four plus or minus 4% of your ability or plus or minus 7% of your ability. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Like, so say your ability, you, you know, like this is your hundred percent. But like plus mm -hmm. or minus four from your max is where you achieve flow state. And when you're really in flow state, you can be performing at like, a, you know, above what you would normally be able to perform, so to speak. But I think it's like four or seven is the cutoff. Hey, but I found that for myself, right? So um, just, just as a quick anecdote with motorbike riding, I only started riding again. Like I rode a little bit when I was younger as a kid, but I only started riding like three and a half years ago and I sucked. Like I was so trash. Like there was no flow state for me for like the first year and a half. Okay. Like I was just pure hurt. Like everything was hard. I would just be beat up. I'd be tired and sore. Okay. So I specifically rode with people who were just a, like a, a bit better than me. Right. Like 
and I was lucky that I had people that were a lot better than me that decided to like step themselves down for a moment to help, you know, level me up. And then I kept challenging myself, continuously writing with people who were better and more skillful and trying to learn. And by doing so, it sort of lifted me up to their standard. And I would achieve flow state very regularly once I got the base skills down because I was trying to ride with them, right? I'm, I'm, but because I'm with them, I became entangled and I was sort of leveraging off their abilities and the fact that they're in a flow and I was sort of latching onto that. And I, I think that that is a huge part of being able to get good at something very quickly. And I think you mentioned a similar thing with video editing, but I don't know if you connected the dots where you would actually watch tutorials and videos and all this other stuff of people who could do the thing that you wanted to do that you couldn't, couldn't currently do. And then you'd go through that and sort of get yourself into a flow or then be able to take that and get yourself into a flow because you, you, you observed and learned from someone or people who are better than you, if that makes sense. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I've had many experiences where people who are a lot better than me get me into the flow state because for some reason, I remember playing uh, intramural soccer in university and I would play better with better players. But if I played yep. with like shitty players, I, I couldn't play like I did with the good players. For some reason, playing with them, like I'm like, holy shit, you know, I had to really step it up. And I felt like I was playing like a really good game just because I was playing with people so much better than me. And they got me into this sort of flow state to activate. Definitely. But <laughs> it's interesting because there is a cutoff. Like it can't be too great. Do you know what I mean? Like they can't be like just orders of magnitude better. There's, there's a, you know, like there's a sort of range, I think. 